if government officials funneled $400 million of your tax money into their own pockets, you would have heard about it by now, right? He has a billion dollar fund that whose own bureaucrats say reminds them of the sponsorship scandal, whose executives give money to their own companies. But you probably haven't, because when liberals are in power, the parliamentary press gallery doesn't like to highlight liberal corruption. There's been explosive testimony by a whistleblower on this Prime Minister's billion dollar green slush fund that's seen $150 million misappropriated and gone to liberal insiders. Liberal appointees to a board that got to make decisions as to which companies got grants worth millions of dollars of taxpayers' money gave those grants to their own companies. A scandal like this should be the lead item on the news day after day. There should be banner headlines on front pages every time there's a new development. There should be shadowy figures in parking garages smoking cigarettes handing out documents to hard-working investigative reporters. I can't tell you who I am, but I worked on the campaign. <laughs> But none of that is really happening. Instead, the parliamentary press gallery is focusing on all different kinds of issues where they can try to distract Canadians from the real essence of the scandal. It's the headline everywhere. Prince Charles, before he was king, shrieking at seeing shrink wrap or plastic wrap as we call it for the first time. So instead of letting the mainstream media confuse and distract, let's get right in to the essence of this scandal. The findings that were the findings used to suspend STTC were known to the federal government all the way back in May of 2023. There's a fund called Sustainable Development Technology Canada and it's supposed to give grants to companies who have legitimate innovative ideas to improve Canada's environmental record. Now SDTC is a huge organization funded by the government to the tune of a billion dollars in tax money. The Liberals appointed their friends to the board. That board gets to decide who gets the cash. And what did they do when those Liberal insiders sat around the table? They started handing out money to their own companies. $400 million of your money went not to improve environmental outcomes, but to line the pockets of Liberal insiders. $334 million over 186 cases to projects in which board members held a conflict of interest. That means they benefited from the decision and they were the ones who made the decision. $58 million to 10 projects that weren't even eligible and couldn't even demonstrate any environmental benefit at all or any development of green technology. The ethics commissioner found that the chair of this board, this liberal appointee, broke the law when she funneled money into her own company. After nine years, the Trudeau Liberals aren't even trying to be creative in their corruption. There was a giant pile of money, which is why we call it a slush fund. And the Liberals on the board that got to make the decision as to who got the money gave it to themselves. This is so blatant, it got caught the first time the fund was audited. If this storyline were part of a movie or a television series, it probably would get rejected due to lazy and bad writing. Now, how do we know this? It's because a brave whistleblower testified at committee and blew the lid wide open on this gross corruption scandal. Here's what the whistleblower said. It should never have taken two years for the issues to reach this point. And what should have been a straightforward process turned into a bureaucratic nightmare that allowed SDTC to continue wasting millions of dollars and abusing countless employees over the last year. Now, if you were in government, you might think, well, hey, let's hold the lawbreakers to account. Let's let the truth come out and let's let the RCMP charge those who knowingly stuff their own pockets with your cash but instead what are the liberals doing they're fighting this tooth and nail they're actually paralyzing Parliament to keep these documents hidden here's what that same whistleblower said about criminal activity I think the Auditor General's investigation was more of a um, cursory review I don't think the goal and mandate of the Auditor General's office to actually look into criminality, so 
I'm not surprised by the fact that they haven't found anything criminal because they're not looking at intent. So if their investigation was focused on intent, of course they would find the criminality. And do you believe that the RCMP doesn't have authority to investigate in this matter? No, I definitely believe they have authority. That's why we need the RCMP to have all the documents so they can see who knew what and when, who was directing people to make those decisions, and who got rich off of your tax money. So the Conservatives passed a parliamentary order to produce all the documents, have the government send all the evidence to the RCMP, and the Liberals refused. So the Speaker ruled that Parliament can't debate anything else until it deals with this corruption scandal. If they're willing to pay the political price for seizing up Parliament, grinding it to a halt, the only conclusion possible is that there must be something so bad in these documents, evidence so damning, that they are willing to pay the political price for grinding Parliament to a halt and cancelling part of the parliamentary session. But Conservatives aren't going to let them run away from the scandal. We're going to continue to fight on behalf of you, the taxpayers. We want the lawbreakers held to account, and we want to get your money back. Once again, thanks for watching.